welcome to morning prayer on Saturday the 6th of February. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand shall hold me fast. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 20. May the Lord hear you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. Send help from his sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Grant your, you your heart's desire and fulfil all your mind. May we rejoice in your salvation and triumph in the name of our God. May the Lord perform all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will save his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the mighty strength of his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will call only on the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. O Lord, save the King and answer us when we call upon you. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And today we come to the final chapter of Hosea, Hosea 14. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take words with you, and return to the Lord. Say to him, Take away all guilt, accept that which is good, and we will offer the fruit of our lips. Assyria shall not save us, we will not ride upon horses, we will say no more, Our God, to the work of our hands, in you the orphan finds mercy. I will heal their disloyalty, I will love them freely. For my anger has turned from them. I will be like the dew to Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall stri uh, strike root like the forests of Lebanon. His shoots shall spread out. His beauty shall be like the olive tree and his fragrance like that of Lebanon. They shall again live beneath my shadow. They shall flourish as a garden. They shall blossom like the vine. Their fragrance shall be like the wine of Lebanon. O Ephraim, what have I to do with idols? It is I who answer and look after you. I am like an evergreen cypress. Your faithfulness comes from me. Those who are wise understand these things. Those who are discerning know them. For the ways of the Lord are right and the upright walk in them but transgressors stumble in them. It's a much more uh, positive chapter to finish yes. Hosea's prophecy on. Offering them some measure of hope. And uh, I was suddenly struck there by the, a verse that came up in the psalm, Psalm 20, and comes up, the, the idea comes up in Hosea too. Uh, some put their trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will call only on the name of the Lord our God. Israel wasn't known for its 
horses and chariots. Uh, the Egyptians had horses and chariots and the Assyrians had their horses and if you're an infantry uh, a person and you've got a, a cavalry charge against you it is a formidable frightening thing and so the idea of making an alliance somebody who's also got cavalry uh, but there comes a point where Assyria will not shall not save us we will not ride upon horses we will say no more our God to the work of our hands in you the orphan finds mercy but yes at long last it seems the people have some understanding unfortunately for the country uh, that didn't follow through mm. and in 722 BC the uh, uh, Assyrians did destroy Samaria and destroying Samaria brought the Kingdom of Israel to an end but there was always that hope that the later prophets held out that uh, uh, God ha uh, loved Israel, loved the northern kingdom for all their sectarian activities uh, and he wanted to bring them back and his vision was always Judah and Israel into the future. Mm. And this idea, I will heal their disloyalty, that's interesting, I will love them freely. Again, all the way through, despite uh, God's judgment for my anger, we've, we've seen the anger, uh, but uh, has turned from them. And this lovely picture of a garden uh, and the trees, and they shall again live beneath my shadow, they shall flourish as a garden, they shall blossom like the vine, their fragrance shall be like the wine of Lebanon. Um, that's, that's what God wants. He wants them to flourish in a good relationship with him. And he comes to them so that, um, picking up our conversation earlier, God only been a prayer away, actually he's closer than that because he doesn't wait for them to come and pray. Uh, in Isaiah somewhere it says, before they have called, you have I will answered. have answered. Yeah. So uh, th there's something here, is again, I will heal their disloyalty. Um, it, it's, it doesn't say if they come to me and confess their sins and show repentance and turn around and start praying and so on. No, I'm, pr I'm standing by, ready to do this. I will love them freely. And our canticle from Isaiah 66 uh, has something similar to start it off. Thus says, says our God, God I, I will comfort, comfort you. you. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. rejoice. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her, says the Lord. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her. That you may drink deeply with delight from her consoling breast. For thus says our God, you shall be nursed and carried on her arm. As a mother comforts her children, so I will comfort you. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. You shall flourish like the grass of the fields. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and to the, the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Thus, thus says our God, I shall comfort you. you. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verses 10 to the end. If Timothy comes, see that he has nothing to fear among you, for he is doing the work of the Lord just as I am. Therefore let no one despise him. Send him on his way in peace, so that he may come to me for I am expecting him with the brothers. Now concerning our brother Apollos, I strongly urged him to visit you with the other brothers, but he was not at all willing to come now. He will come when he has the opportunity. Keep alert, stand firm in your faith, be courageous, be strong, let all that you do be done in love. Now brothers and sisters, you know that the members of the household of Stephanus were the first converts in Achaia. 
and they have devoted themselves to the service of the saints, I urge you to put yourselves at the service of such people and of everyone who works and toils with them. I rejoice at the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaicus, because they have made up for your absence. They have refreshed my spirit as well as yours. So give recognition to such people. The churches of Asia send greetings. Aquila and Prisca, together with the church in their house, greet you warmly in the Lord. All the brothers and sisters send greetings. Greet one another with a holy kiss. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Let anyone be accursed who has no love for the Lord. Our Lord, come. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. My love be with all of you in Christ Jesus. Even writing this final set of greetings was tricky for Paul. He's writing them a letter, having sent, it seems, Timothy to bring the letter to them and to sort things out with them. Um, that's a bit if Timothy comes, say that he's got nothing to fear among you. Why should he have had anything to fear mm. among them? Yeah. Can they be just a little bit self-aware of how things are working amongst them? Because they may not, may not be intending to come across as causing fear, but they need to know that they do. And uh, this assurance. And then right back in chapter 3, when he talked about summer of Apollos and summer of Cephas. Um, now concerning our brother Apollos, I strongly urged him to visit you, but he wasn't willing at this point. He'll come to you in time. So there's a whole lot of other discussion going on uh, behind the scenes as well. That is, And then this, keep alert, stand firm. And then the bit that I think is possibly the trickiest is to mention people, presumably Stephanus and his household, need support. Uh, put yourself at the service of such people. And for Paul to ask the Corinthians to support them uh, does run a risk at this point of making things worse. Uh, but he must really need their support. So, um, give recognition to such people. And then the churches of Asia. Um, so, Paul is in Ephesus. This is Asia as in the Roman province of Asia, not Asia as we know it. So, West, Western Turkey as we Western know Turkey. It. And there are churches because uh, from Paul's uh, mission to Ephesus and his presence in Ephesus, other churches came into being like the church in Colossae, uh, which was founded by Epaphras. Uh, but um, Paul is preaching to others who then take the message out. So within the province, there's more than just a church or churches in Ephesus. Mm. There are churches in other places too. Oh, right, so you think about the churches uh, of Asia sends greeting. Yes. And uh, given how difficult it was to communicate uh, between these different churches, because the distance and, and no internet, um, uh, they're having to... Um, no decent postal service either. No. Let's go be before the internet. Uh, but uh, presumably there are a number of merchants amongst the early Christians and they're carrying messages around as they travel from one place to another. But it is hugely important to be in touch with each other. So Paul is able to bring a greeting from the churches of Asia because he is in contact with them. And our reconstruction, best as we can do it, of Paul's letters to Corinth and visits to Corinth suggest multiple letters and multiple visits. Mm.
Your salvation is near to those that fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. That glory may dwell in our land. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. And the Benedictus. Shine on us, O God, God, who dwell in darkness, darkness, and and guide guide us into into the way of peace. peace. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory Glory to to the the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as as it was in the beginning, is now, and and shall be forever. Amen. Shine on us, O God, who dwell in darkness, and guide us into the way of peace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks for our homes, our families, our friends, and all whom we love. While having been thinking about the difficulty of the churches keeping in touch with one another in the early years of the church, Father, we give you thanks for all the ways in which we can keep in touch with family and friends and those we love in these days. And Father, we know that uh, uh, the methods we have are inadequate compared to what we would want to be doing. We pray that you will add your blessing to each form of communication, that you might be reaching out to all of those we care for. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for those who have devoted themselves to looking after others, whether it's uh, members of their own family or whether they work in care homes or in the health service or all sorts other forms of caring, being good neighbours. Father God, we thank you for those who have devoted themselves uh, to, uh, to looking after other people. And we do pray, Lord, that they in turn will have people who will look after and support them. We do pray, Lord, that you would bless and strengthen them in the work that they do. And that you would be uh, their, their strength, you would be their comfort, you would be their encouragement. In Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray especially for those who are close to death. We thank you that your power reaches out uh, beyond death, that you raise us to new life in Christ. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are close to death, who may be in pain, in distress. We pray particularly for those who uh, are alone or only surrounded by those they do not know. And we pray for you to breathe into them your hope at this time. We pray too for those who uh, reach out in their hearts after those they love who are close to death and regret the way they are unable to be alongside them at this time. And Father, we give you thanks for staff in hospitals and homes who will sit with those who are dying and we pray that you will strengthen them in that ministry. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. Lord, as we look forward to tomorrow being able to uh, worship together, uh, we do thank you, Lord, for uh, the different ways in which we can worship you despite 
uh, lockdown. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for the eight o'clock service at uh, St. James. And uh, we thank you too, Lord, for uh, the internet services, those on YouTube, and for the children's uh, sessions and the youth sessions. We do thank you, Lord, that we are able to continue to worship you. And we do thank you, Lord, for the freedom we have in this country to worship you without fear of persecution. So, Father God, we pray that as we and other people all around the place gather to worship in Jesus' name tomorrow, that you would be amongst us all, that you would bless and renew us, and uh, that we might uh, be able to walk more closely with you because of the time that we have spent together in your presence. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Almighty God, by whose grace alone we are accepted and called to your service, strengthen us by your Holy Spirit and make us worthy of our calling through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.